He drills this one pretty good, and he's got it. So 10-10 to go in the ball game, and Reno puts three more up there and makes it now a 10-point game. Idaho favor. Just when you thought public television was safe to watch, a long Mitch Stratton and Jeff McLean, 10 10 to go in the fourth quarter, and slowly Reno has crept back into this ball game. Down by 10, 38 28, thanks to Marty Zendejas' 44 yard field goal. And Zendejas kicks it on the ground uh, on the tartan surface, and Idaho has to just fall on it there at the 21. And that's not a bad play. The way that ball bounces on this surface, they get some crazy bounces. Uh, one point on, on the last field goal, Zendejas, one thing I noticed was there wasn't much of an Idaho charge. You might have noticed that, too, when you were watching. Uh, I don't know if Idaho maybe might have been laying back looking for a fake, as Zakeo is the holder on that. They might have, you know, suspected a fake on the field goal. So that's one thing to look for maybe later on if we get into that situation again. Good point. First down and 10, the Randalls at the 21. Trying to play some ball control now. And the way the Vandals know how is to throw it. And they complete it to, uh, this time, Chris Slater, his second reception of the game for about six yards. Slater, just a little curl pattern. Just turn and look in. Friesel drill the ball for about, looks like a seven-yard gain. Slater, Slater, a talented one, and he'll inherit that tight end spot next year. He's a good one. That's right. They're going to lose Robinson, and he'll be shortly missed. They're working with two tight ends right now. Quick out to John Jake. And Jake gets shoved out of bounds, but got the first down. John Jake could have just ran out of bounds, but uh, he might like contact a little bit as he just turned it upfield and put a pop on the defender that was coming up to meet him. That was Bernard Ellison. Out of that farm team for the Idaho Vandals at L.A. Valley. Of course, uh, he and Neosha Morris both from that football school, rich in tradition. First down and 10, Idaho at the 35. 9.34 to go. The Vandals by 10. Altenhofen inside a block. Nice run. And they got Hoynes out over the 40 to the midfield area. You're going to see some great blocks thrown by Todd New and Greg Hale over on the right side. Hale goes 275. Todd New at 263. Let's take a look at it. Hoynes with some good running. Big Bro hole over on the right side. Broken back up that lane at, at the right moment. First and 10. Now the Idaho moving at the 47. Trep said near side is six foot four. John Freeze looks it over. And gives to Altenhofen. Slamming over left tackle, and he gets about three. Elton Hoffman out of Blanchett High School. He's just a sophomore, 5'11", 192. And we're looking at the three and four backs doing the job for the Idaho Vandals. Just think what they might be doing with their one and two backs. Just cuts it around the left end. It's a real Picks tribute a couple. to that offensive front. Second down and six after the four-yard pickup. Just inside Reno territory as Alton Hoffman leaves Freeze alone in the backfield. And that ball got batted down. That might have been Bonzel in Osgard. Bonzel, the uh, junior, stuck a hand up there. I thought I saw number 54 with a mid on it, but uh, we'll have now to take a look. Could be right. See. That was Bonzel. It was. My mistake. I thought it was Scott belly over there good pressure that time by the Nevada Reno defensive line third down and six quick count phrase to throw with time zips it near side to Jake out of bounds incomplete and Reno gets the ball back very close play but uh, Jake just out of bounds Jason Siebel kind of roughs up John Freeze over there at the end of that play. Nothing real serious. Got a good look at the replay. He definitely was not in bounds with the reception. John plays for one of the rare punts of the day. Oh, he hits a beauty. 
This one bouncing inside the five and into the end zone. Nice kick, though, by John Place. 49-yarder. So we'll break away. 8.13 to go in the final period. Next time on America by Design, public places and monuments. We want our public buildings to express the dignity of our institutions. And we choose to make public gestures to commemorate our heroes and to mark the passage of our history. Join Spiro Kostov for a look at public places and monuments next time on America by Design. Tune in Monday at 7 on KUID. Meaning to the word beefcakes. <laughs> Maybe they'll have uh, professions as pro wrestlers someday. You never know. How's Greg Hale, number 70, the nearest to us? The next Hulk Hogan. First down and 10, Reno. They get the ball back, down by 10. The Wolfpack trying to go to work on that lead. Long, long count by Zaccheo. And he drops the throw. Throwing deep downfield. Nearly picked off by Plays. I thought John Plays was going to knock the head right off the shoulders of Lucius Floyd on that play. He had a shot at him, had the angle, went for the ball instead. Probably the smarter play of the two. If you can see him coming into your picture at the end of this play, take a look at the angle that he had. I thought for sure he was going to drill him coming into your picture. Right? No, right there. I guess he just took a different angle. But boy, it looked like there was going to be a big collision at the beginning of that play. Vakeo threw that one about 50 yards in the air. Second down and 10 at the 20. Now the splitbacks. Play fake and a counter and a loose foot got back on it. The big offensive lineman Todd Green, the left guard, able to cover it up. And boy, did the heart come up in the throat of Chris Alt on that play. Was that a shot by Jerry Medved? I believe it was Jerry Medved on that. Let's take a look. Yeah, it was. Watch him come up and just put a hit on the running back from Reno. That is a shot, folks. Third down and 13. Play Reno sorely needs. Mateo under the oh, line. Yeah. Peter Wilkins. No doubt. Good call in the backfield. What a hold by the offensive lineman. Pleasewitz more or less just tackled Pete Wilkins, who's coming on from coming in from the right defensive end. Hopefully we can see it at this angle. Take a look. He's got look at that. You can't do that, young man. You know, that is a hole. It looked like Klesowitz almost pushed Wilkins right into him. He was uh, trying to shove him off, but it gave him a little forward Good progress, I think. By the offense. Decline. Fourth down. What a play by Mr. Wilkins coming in from the right end. More than one big play turned in today by Idaho. Crucial situations. Pete Wilkins out of Gonzaga Prep, and what a tradition at that school. 232 pounds, six foot four inches tall. And as Zaccheo comes off, he is holding his right arm a little bit, shaken up on that sack by Wilkins. To punt the ball, Chris Duran, and he hits this one way short. In fact, it takes a bit of a vandal bounce, and Idaho will have it first down and 10 at the 38. 7 one to go, fourth quarter. John Freeze leads his troops up. Check this first down play and tell you on first down, Idaho averaging 7.3 yards per carry, and Altenhofen rips off about that many off right tackle. Altenhofen, the number four back for the Vandals. Scoots through behind the block of Todd Hoynes and picks up some pretty good yardage. 5'11", 184. Goes Altenhofen. Good shot of Coach Gilbertson and some of his Idaho Vandals. Yosha Morris over there, John Jake. Boy, this is a really, you know, you don't want to call a win, but a really big game right now if Idaho could get one in the win column. Look forward to Eastern Washington next week. Always a tough game. Second down and four. Just a power over the left side, and boy. John Altenhofen again, and uh, Reno stuffed it pretty well. Altenhofen got nailed by number 42 from the Wolfpack. That's Dwayne Norfleet came up 
and put a major league hit on the <laughs> running back from Idaho. He didn't give any ground on that hit either. Third and a yard for the Vandals. Clock continuing to run, 3.47 in the fourth. 38-28, Idaho leading the Reno Wolfpack. Power formation for the Vandals. Reno crowd in the line. Point is tripped up, and he won't make it. Boy, great penetration again by Reno. No wonder they're the conference leader against the rush on defense. That's right. That was that was just a super effort. Now their linebackers are starting to take charge a little bit. Defensive line doing a good job of keeping the blockers off them. That time, Scott Lamori came up and made a nice play as well. As I said, linebackers kind of taking control of things now for Nevada Reno. Only a 10-point difference, right around three minutes left to go. In fact, exactly three minutes. And Reno with 10 men on the line. Vandals taking time on this one. Putting every last second tick down. Low snap and oh, plays did a nice job of getting away and then he drills it. It's taken by Kasky. Kasky running the near side and Idaho cuts him down. Ernest Sanders in on the tackle. 47 yard boot by John Plays after a low snap. And that is a scary thought with only a 10 point lead and down in Nevada Reno territory, a low snap like that. In case you're wondering, Reno with the full complement of three timeouts remaining. Of course, that's one thing you tell uh, a uh, punt snapper if you're going to miss, miss low, do not snap it over their head. Craig Robinson handles that chore, by the way, for the Vandals. Zach Eo, back to throw. As Folger, or make that not Folger, but rather that's Egu. And Egu runs out of bounds, stopping the clock. That time the screen was read well by the Idaho Vandals. Rudis was over there to help out, along with number 87 for the Vandals. Gave home and Pete Wilkins. Three yard gain, second and seven. 235 to go. This game definitely not over yet. Reno has been able to score like lightning when they've wanted to. The KO back over the middle. And that's Demedrick Davis. And oh, what a great play by Paulson. Number 29. Virgil Paulson out of Meridian High School coming up with a big play that time. As Davis spun and spun and spun trying to get loose and was finally brought down by Virgil Paulson. Third and seven, Reno going at the line without a huddle. Two-minute offense now. <laughs> Floyd, hit and knocked down. Rudis again. This freshman is having the game of his life. I tell you what, that kid is going to get my vote for all conference in the end of this season if he keeps playing like he has the past two weeks. Defensive line was an area of concern as Reno has taken one of its three timeouts. Minute 54 to go. But Keith Gilbertson really didn't know what to expect on the defensive line. And since last week, a little shuffling up there. They've moved Brutus to a defensive end and Craig Dowdy and Court Smith, who has moved from the right end position down to a tackle. And uh, they really kind of solidified things up front with Wilkins in there also at the A. Defensive end position. Brutus not very big. 6'2", only 230, just a freshman out of Kennedy High School in Seattle. As I said, he's not real big, but boy, is he quick. He pursues as well as any defensive lineman I've seen in some time. He's always in on the tackle, especially unlike the little flare passes, swing passes, screen passes to the outside. He's always around the ball. Good job by Jim Brutus. In the scheme of that Vandal 4-3, Keith Gilbertson wants to see penetration by the defensive front, and then go ahead and let the linebackers make the tackles, but the defensive front has had its lion's share of tackles tonight. Once again, we'll remind you that Montana beat Boise State earlier today. Final score, 12 to three. One tax 10 score you might have missed. UCLA blew out Oregon 41 to 10 at the Rose Bowl today. Charvez Foger slant for a first down. This time, the Wolfpack chose to go over the left side of the line. They've been running to the right quite a bit in today's ball game. This time, they go over to the left. 
Tom Klesiewicz is over there and Todd Green. Also the center, Mike Mike Holmes. 234, 240, and 260 are the weights on those linemen. Reno taking his time getting the ball snapped here. From behind, Cord Smith with another sack on Zaccheo. Cord Smith, the sophomore out of Bora High School, 6'2", 245, and he has made two big, big plays for the Idaho Vandals. He's adjusting to that tackle position like he's been playing it all his life, and he did play it in high school. Pass over the middle intended for Davis behind him incomplete. Once again, credit Cord Smith coming up the middle and putting the pressure on the quarterback. Zakea felt the pressure and dumped it off. Minute 16 to go in the game. 38-28 Idaho with a 10-point lead. And the Reno Wolfpack have uh, been working uphill all game long. Four sacks in the game for Idaho, minus 36 yards. Zaccheo backpedaling to throw, zips it near side, and Logan with a foot inbound stops the clock and gets the first down into Vandal territory. I tell you what, Tony Logan is very impressive at the wide receiver position. That time, he just more or less sat down out of bounds. Watch the footwork by Logan to stay in bounds. He'll turn his back to the sideline, catch the ball, and just sit down. What a play by Tony Logan, and he is a good one. Well thrown out route by Zaccheo. Good point. First down and 10, 47 yard line. We've got a minute 11 to go, and Reno still has a pair of timeouts to use. Wolfpack moving the ball. Mateo, Rudis giving charge, knocks the ball loose. And it's picked up, a cardinal sin by one of the big offensive linemen, Tom Klesiewicz, who picked that up and tried to run for daylight. <laughs> Oh, boy. Everybody's trying to get in on the act today. Look at Rudis. What pursuit from the outside. Look at the quickness. Knocks the ball loose, just strips it. Heads up play by the lineman, as Jeff said, though. Should have fallen on it. Second down and two. The game threw off that play. The KO downfield, and there's Egu. Makes the grab first down out of bounds at the 31. Once again, Zaccheo pressured, this time by Doughty from the inside. Greg Doughty, 250 pounds, six foot two inches tall, a senior out of Wilson High School. And I believe he's a transfer from Olympic Community College. Well, Idaho's called the timeout here rather surprisingly. 35 seconds to go. 38-28, and the Vandals with a 10-point lead. <laughs> A lot of the Vandals pulling their caps off, trying to take a breather. The defensive linemen have been working their tails off, running around chasing Zaccheo around in the backfield. And they've done a great job of it. Oh, yeah, credit both offensive and defensive lines for the victory should the Vandals win it. Ten-point lead with 35 seconds left. But they have done a super job both ways for the Idaho Vandals today. Vandals also have number 68. Hey, take a look at that view. That's what uh, one of our cameramen is seeing. And boy, another great job today, guys and gals. Do not adjust the set on that one. You can hear the homecoming crowd giving out a roar. Everybody's enthused about this one. Vandals up by 10, 35 seconds left to go. We talked so much about how entertaining the Big Sky Conference is and uh, not being disappointed again here today. That's right. 38-28, the Vandals by 10, trying to cling to this one. Reno has it first and 10 at the 31. They still have two timeouts, but only 35 seconds to go. Jim Zaccheo, the junior quarterback out of San Jose, goes to work. Boger and Floyd in the backfield. Zaccheo looking downfield now. He's flushed out of there. The 25, the 20, still on his feet, and oh, he stayed inbounds. And the clock will continue to run, I think. Now, wait a minute. Are they going to say he got out of bounds? Or did Reno take a timeout? Because it sure did not look like he was out of bounds. Okay, so Reno calls for the timeout with 26 seconds to go. Now, guess what two people were after the quarterback after the quarterback on that play cord smith pressuring him in the backfield and then jim rudis coming up and helping jerry medved out to knock him out of bounds or actually not out of bounds but come up with the tackle 
Jim Rudis taking a breather down there. He's got his hands on his knees, or did have. He's got to be sucking a little bit. He has been working his tail off here in the second half. Well, you know, if Zakeo would have used his head, he would have got out of bounds and saved a timeout for Chris Alt's club. But he uh, elected to try to run for a few more yards. And uh, therefore, Reno had no choice but to call for the timeout. Yeah. I think it's pretty tough to think very clear when uh, you've got about 10 black shirts <laughs> coming at you. Main thing is get down and out of the way and don't get hurt. Eastern Washington next week for the Vandals. Reno has an on-conference game in Texas uh, against Austin. We have at the home game. I think I said uh, on the road at the homer, though. So that's first down and 10 for Reno, but they need a touchdown here. So look at it first and 13, really. 26 seconds to go. Reno with one timeout left now. Egu in motion through the picture. Zakeo rolling left, looking Logan's way, fires it there, and it's picked by Johnson! And that seals this one. Say good night. Kevin Johnson with a great defensive play, just playing a little bit of center field back there. Came in and picked it up. The senior from Garfield High School. Take a look now. Johnson comes into your screen, underthrown pass. As Zakeo had to get it up to get it over the linebacker, Johnson did not do that. Interception, and that should seal it for the Idaho Vandals. I thought maybe we were going to see one of those swing plays where he looks left and swings it back to the near side like he used earlier in the ball game, but to this time be a, drawing a bead on Logan, and Logan well covered. Therefore, Johnson intercepts John Fries to one knee, and this game's history. So the Idaho Vandals for the second time in a row here at home against uh, Reno as uh, Reno has called for one more timeout prolonging <laughs> the agony. 11 seconds to go. And it's got to be a happy, happy Vandal crew. I tell you what, let's mention some names here. Pete Wilkins on the defensive line along with his compatriots, Craig Dowdy, Jim Rudis, and Cord Smith have done a super job today for the Idaho Vandals. Now on the offensive end of things, Greg Hale, Todd New, Steve Unger, Chris Hoff, and Troy Wright. Those are some people that don't, don't get a lot of recognition, but they won the ball game for Idaho today. There's no doubt about that. See Keith Gilbertson giving a love pat to big uh, Cord Smith on that one, number 99, uh, playing the tackle. Now Idaho with 11 seconds will punt the ball here, or at least line up like they're going to. I'm sorry, no, they're not either. I, why would they do that? <laughs> they're punting the ball on first down. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> Idaho the winner, final score, 38-28. And we'll be back. Good game today, Court. Coach, get a little tense there at the end. Uh, Reno kind of gave you some fits there in the fourth quarter. Yeah, we got a class in this campus, which is you can major in thrilling finishes. Well, you certainly had one today. John Freeze, big day, over 460 yards passing. What'd you have him eat in pregame? We have Wheaties today, or? No, we just have our usual scrambled eggs and sausage and toast, and away we go. But I'll tell you what, the first half was the offense, but the second half was the defense. Guys like Cord Smith from Boar High played great. You brought over a guy, Cord Smith. He had a big day, some cru crucial sacks, and a lot of pressure in that fourth quarter. How'd you feel about your performance today? Well, we all played well. I don't think any one person played well. I think we all played well as a team. Really good effort by the defense and by the offense. Well, some happy vandals here. Big homecoming victory for Coach Keith Gilbertson and Cord Smith. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Here with good tradition, that'll be a fun one. 38-28 uh, the final. Uh, as this happy homecoming crowd files out of here, we had, like I say, probably our best, uh, well, was our best crowd of the year. His no game play. tonight should be no difference. He's looking at Eastern Washington. EWU, it's a Governor's Cup. They would like to come down here into the confines of the Kibbe Dome and take one away from the Vandals. It is big sky action. 
That's right. The first time these two teams have ever met on the Big Sky football field. Might be well advised in case you missed it over the weekend. Montana's, uh, Montana fell to Weber State, so that means the Wildcats are surprising 4-0 in the sky. So if Idaho wants to remain still just a half game back, they'll have to shoot for a win here tonight. And that makes it extremely important for teams with two losses in the conference. Teams like Boise State, uh, Montana, Nevada, Reno, Northern Arizona, and Idaho State, all in desperate needs of wins as you check the scores over the weekend. And the Vandals will give the ball up first to Eastern and dropping back deep. It will be for Eastern. Uh, Dominic Kaur, the deepest of three receivers as the Vandals are scrimmaging right around the 25 right now are set to break that initial kickoff huddle. And Jeff, this is the Governor's Cup. You'll have to remember that this is the first meeting between these two teams since Eastern has entered the Big Sky Conference. These guys have met several times before, but this is the first time since they've been in the Big Sky Conference, and it should be a good one. Eastern coming in, they've got a couple of wins in Big Sky play. The Idaho Vandals looking tough, coming off that big, impressive win last week at homecoming. And Eastern, incidentally, lost their homecoming last week. Idaho won their homecoming against Nevada, Reno, and John Freeze really had himself a career day last week. It's the Spuds against the Apples. Winner take all. And uh, not a crowd as big as we expected here, but they continue to file in as Desicchio backed up about seven yards to get the football game underway. And he'll scuff this one on the ground. Uh, bounces off one of the upbacks and then falling on it for Eastern and covering the ball is Paul Farrell right around the 35. So third, first down and 10 Eastern. Check me the 30. Well, Desicchio trying a little squib kick, maybe to catch them off guards a little bit, and maybe a fumble or something didn't quite work, and Eastern will start out with pretty decent field position from their own 31. And the good news is that sophomore quarterback John Snyder is back in the lineup after missing about a game in three quarters the past two weeks. Two losses for Eastern in that situation. Double tied in on first down and 10. Vernon Williams also in the backfield. He returned last week, and he sweeps it near side, runs away from one tackler, and then struggles up near the 35 or 36. Pretty good run by Williams on his first carry. You know, Jeff, we're going to watch this again in this first carry. Right now, he picks up more yardage on the ground than they had in the whole game last week as they were held to minus 26 yards on the ground Eastern last week versus Northern Illinois. Williams, really one of the only guys in the uh, team not from the state of Washington. He hails from San Diego. Give him seven yards on that one. Second down and three. Off the near hash and twin outs to the left. One man wide out to the right. Snyder gives it to Williams again, who falls forward for near first down yardage. Looks pretty close. He had to cross the 40 to about the 41-yard line. He got to the 41, depending on where they put the spot of the ball. It looks like from here that it would be a first down. It is a first down for Eastern. First down and 10 Eagles at the 41. Offensive line of Jeff Mickles, Scott Kenoyer, Tim Trout, Steve Hine, and Mike Norton across the front. 275, 258, 235, 252, and 269. First down and 10. The Eagles at the 41. Early going of the football game, no score. Snyder for his first pass. And he zings it all, oh, and it's tipped and broken up by Peter Wilkins, who opens at the middle linebacker position, and he played the pass route well. We're going to watch this again. Wilkins, a couple of games ago, was moved from the left end. He was a defensive end to that middle linebacker spot. They want to get him into the action a little bit more. It does Keith Gilberts and Jeff. You'll watch this. Snyder rolling out to his left, and big number 87 put up a paw. Look at the man was wide open. Good defensive effort by Pete Wilkins. Eastern, Tim Floyd has joined Williams in the eye, the senior out of Othello. Twin receivers out to the left, tight end right on second down and 10 after the pass deflection. Vandals uh, sending Ernest Sanders on the blitz, and Williams hit on the backfield, able to keep his feet, though, and get back to about the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Williams, and we've seen this little back, Steve, with good balance in his first few carries. Well, he's been impressive so far. We'll watch this one again, too, Jeff, as you see number eight, Ernest Sanders, coming in on the blitz, trying to scare him up a little bit, maybe get him in the backfield, but no way. Breaks a tackle right there. Nice job running. Wide receivers, Jamie Bensley, Ferris High split out to the left, and Greg Fleming comes to the near side right on third down and 11 for Eastern, short of the 40. Snyder trying to look for a screen, and from behind, 
Cord Smith, who picks up from where he left off last week. And Cord Smith running out the field. He is a very pumped up Idaho Vandal. We'll watch this one again. Look at number nine. You see him on 99. You see him on your screen. Just a straight drop back. Cord Smith coming in from the right side. And there was absolutely nothing John Snyder could do. He just tried to run away from him, Jeff. No way. Cord Smith right there to make a big drop. Bring on Eric Stein, who only leads the nation in one double-A punting. 43-yard average and a fair catch signal for by Lee Allen. And he gathers it in just over the 30. 43-yard kick. He hits his average with 13-12 to go. Opening quarter. With John Freeze in the backfield, and you see Bruce Harris in motion. Good to see Bruce back from the knee injury. Freeze cranks it up, throws. Oh, ball off the shoulder pad of John Jake and incomplete. Well, John Jake had it, and that rifle arm once again by John Freeze sets up and throws it over to the right side. Jake should have probably come down at that, but the tip of the football hit him right in the shoulder pads and pads and bounced right off. The Osha Morris in for John Jake. Morris and Eric Jorgensen. Craig Robinson leading the Vandals in receiving. Fourth in the conference, 36 receptions. Jorgensen has 34. Jake, 32. Miosha, 21. So they got a gang of them. Second down and 10. Freeze again dropping to throw. Swings it out to Hoynes. Hoynes, oh, good defensive play by Eastern to snuff it out. The screen pass over to Hoynes. Hoynes picks up a couple of yards, and that's about it. Jeff, last couple of weeks, John Freeze has definitely been on target. He is 59 out of 97 in the last two weeks. That's 61% for 772 yards and seven touchdowns. So Freeze, the sophomore from Coeur d'Alene, playing some good football as of late. Continues to lead the big sky in total offense and second in the nation. Third down and seven vandals. Freeze. Again, stammering in the pocket, plenty of time, and he swings it out to Harris. And again, good defense by Eastern to shut him down. Quinton Blight, 5'9", 160, the sophomore out of Oak Harbor, number one, came up and cut down Harris. Well, they've got that great secondary, does the Eastern Eagles, Jeff. Look at the time that John Freeze has. He goes on a straight draw back, sets up, has all the time, looks over to his right, can't find anybody, looks over to his left, there's a safety valve, drops it off there, that's all they get. Eastern with a 10-man front as... Brian, uh, pardon me, John plays. What a it's punt. a nice lofty spiral. It's taken by Vernon Williams. Williams stutter steps his way to the 20, and a pretty good return by Williams, who was not the intended man to start the ball game. 53-yard boot by John plays with 11:48 to go in the first quarter. He's an Eastern takes over first down and 10 at the 23. New setback in there. That's Tony Johnson. Double tight ends again, double wide. Oh, maybe a broken, broken play, play, and Snyder will just put slide in the backfield. He didn't even make any attempt, and of course, remember, Snyder has that bad shoulder, and he wasn't going to... That's exactly what it was, too, Jeff. He just didn't want to get injured again, and he saw that the whole left side of the off defensive line for the Idaho Vandals coming up to make the stop. Snyder did a smart thing of going to his knee on the broken play. Steve Shiroki out of West Valley High School has come in the backfield, and... Uh, He'll join Vernon Williams, who's back in there. Shiroki lines up in front of Williams. And it'll be the tail of a tandem. That's Vernon Williams again. Just off guard. No big play there. No big yards either. Idaho sniffing it out. Nice play. Well, you and I saw Shiroki play quite a few times in his career up in West Valley in Spokane. And he was a one-man wrecking crew up there. See how he does in the college ranks. Keep an eye on Jamie Bensley, the leading receiver for Eastern. He's wide out to the left. To the near side right, Fleming. And a wing Floyd set off to the left on third down and 11 from the 22. Oh, we got action up front. Looks like the tight end was the first one to cross the line for Eastern Washington. Brooke Aldrich. Randall Coring right there. They're... Uh, Trying to determine exactly who was the first man offside. Well, you know that Weber State win on Saturday really makes uh, the Idaho game important. And next week, the Vandals venture to Ogden. It should be a very exciting game. Weber State, a very tough football team. Procedure against the Eagles, so it'll make a third down and rather 16 to go for Eastern. Dead ball. Leg of protection in the offense. 
Van blamed with it was number 89, Brooke Baldrick. Six foot five, 234 pound senior tight end. Crossed just a little bit too prematurely. Aldrich, the second leading receiver for Eastern, a little over anxious on that one. Third and 16 now, Jeff. The Idaho defense has held uh, secondary wise the last couple of times. Also, the Eastern Eagles on their first uh, defensive possession, Jeff, they did a good job of snuffing out the pass. As John Freeze had a lot of time, but their secondary is tough, and they didn't allow a pass. These two teams match up very well statistically. We'll talk more about that as the game unfolds. Third down and 16 for the Eagles. Jerry Medved uh, faking blitz, and he drops off. Long count by Snyder. He drops the throw. And flings it up the left side, and he's got Bunsley for a first down at the 435. Jimmy Bunsley, he was just all by himself, too. There wasn't anybody out there in a flash. He laid a nice pass and did John Snyder. First down, they needed 16 yards to go for the first down. He picked up 18 in the first. Watch it again. One man in mind as Snyder drops back about a three-step drop back. Goes over, where's the defense? Boom, first down Eastern. Bensley is looking to become the first receiver in Eastern history to average 23 yards per grab. He was five yards short of that one, but to pick up the first down with the 18-yard reception. So first down and 10 Eastern at the 35 as Snyder converts on third and 16. Crosses back to Williams. Uh oh Williams in the open field and runs it into Idaho territory. Boy, we've seen Vernon Williams do a number so far on the defensive side for the Idaho Vandals, Jeff. This time he goes around left side, picks up another first down for Eastern. We'll watch it again. Remember, this is a team that last week against Northern Illinois had minus 26 yards in the ground. Either Illinois, Northern Illinois has a great defense, or I don't know what happened, because look at this guy. He's just uh, running rampant through the Idaho Vandal defense. Virgil Paulson ran him out of bounds. First down and 10, the Eagles at the Idaho 44. taking a lot of time, maybe checking off. Off the play action. Oh, well behind the intended receiver, the tight end, Aldrich. Good defense, too. Uh, Aldrich had about man-to-man -man coverage. There was no chance he probably could have made the reception. The ball thrown a little bit behind him. Brings up second down and 10 for Eastern. Now, Steve, you look how much uh, John Snyder means to this team before he went down a couple of games ago. Eastern was 4-1. And... One. and uh, Two and one in the conference, and they were sitting right there in perfect shape, but the injury to Snyder, he looks healthy though here so far tonight, and is facing second down and 10. Williams, oh, he got slugged by Jerry Medved, number 51. And maybe someone underneath there, too, getting a piece of it. Yet, yeah, Cord Smith, number 99, and also for the Vandals, Craig Dowdy, number 80, all in on the stop. Well, Eastern election to keep it on the ground. You see some of the cone heads here. A little uh, Halloween a week away. Maybe these guys are getting their costumes on early. Warming up a little bit. I, I hope that these are costumes anyway. <laughs> Third down and eight. Didn't play like this on Remulac, did they? <laughs> 9.15 to go first quarter. High formation backs for Snyder. Just a sophomore. Rolling pocket, firing near side, and a diving reception by Bensley once again for another Eastern first down. Oh, they're going to say it was incomplete, Jeff. No, they said it was complete. And you know who the man who was who made this play possible was number 33, Vernon Williams, the guy who's done so well on the ground. He laid a block on somebody coming from the right side of the Vandals to enable Snyder to set up and complete that pass. A beautiful block by number 33, Vernon Williams, who's had himself a great first period. Snyder being able to buy some time and find his man. First and 10. Williams, the short side. Peter Wilkins isn't going to let him get away as he knocks him out of bounds around the 30. Wilkins, the first man to come up there to help out and uh, coming up with Roger Cecil to give him a little added effort. We'll watch it again. Vernon Williams, he's gotten the call many times so far early in this ball game. This time tries over right side. There's a middle linebacker coming up to make the stop. He holds him anyway for Cecil to knock him out of bounds. Consider Jamie Townsend, the, probably one of the better backs in the big sky, or hurt early in the year and was redshirted. In fact, they almost redshirted Townsend. Right now he's in there for the Eagles on second down and 12. On the 30. There goes Williams again, and Medved and Williams clobber him after about a three-yard gain. We're going to watch it again and uh, 
see about a three or four yard gain this time. So Williams going over just the left guard, picks up good yardage. Brought down in a nice hit by Medved. Good camera work too, he really got a good look at that one. Third down and nine at the 27. Eastern, here they are again in this third down situation. Bensley right, Fleming left. Crowd getting into it a little bit, sounds like the Metrodome. Snyder runs away from one tackler. He did a nice job to get rid of the football, trying to spot his tight end Aldrich well short. Incomplete fourth down and bring on Eric Stein. Well, he had to get rid of that in a quick hurry or else eat the ball, too. Is Kevin Johnson in on him and a couple of other Idaho Vandals coming in? There was nothing that Snyder could do. Had to just throw the ball or else it would have been a big, big loss. Now the field goal unit comes on for EWU. This one about a 43-yarder, and consider Stein has kicked him from 57, two times from 501, and from 34. He's 5 of 9 on the year. Product out of West Valley of Yakima. And this one well within his range. And out of the hold of Arzur, he fades it right off to the right. No good. Hit it well, but hit it off to the right. And so the Vandals are able to... The Idaho Vandals, second possession of the football game at the 27. Freeze pro set formation and gives it to Bruce Harris, who follows Todd Hoynes up through the middle and then veers off to the right and picks up about three. That check me more like about eight. Yeah, Bruce Harris over right side, Jeff. He needs to get to the end of the game and get some uh, good yardage established. Earlier this season, he was the biggest running back for the Vandals, only a freshman. This time gets the carry over right side. Good blocking right there. Was that Hoynes with a nice lead block? Spring him for a couple more, and Bruce Harris gets about three or four just on his own. They touched him down back at the 33, so a gain of six, second down and four. Good to get him back in the lineup for the Vandals. Got to get him healthy. Jorgensen left. Neosha Morris out to the right, and here's Hoynes who barrels for near first down yardage. Nothing fancy, just straight ahead running. Todd Hoyne, a second back through, number 20, got the call. Got almost to the, well, it looks like they're going to spot it to give Idaho a decent spot, and it's going to be close enough to bring the chains out for measurement. Keith Gilbertson felt maybe Todd Hoyne's best game was last week against Reno. He did just about everything. Block was used well as a pass receiver and ran very, very well, averaging over five yards per crack. Looks like it is a Vandal first down. Yes, it is. Half a football length, and so Idaho picks it up. No score in the game, 7.06 to go, first period. From the Kibbe Dome, and you get a look at some of the Kibbe Dome crowd here, and I would guess right around maybe uh, 8,000. Jeff, looking at the crowd, you know who the Coneheads are? They look like they're Virgil Paulson's folks. They've got Virgil Paulson's number and jerseys on. <laughs> first down and 10 at the 37. Ray's looking left, now he wants to throw and dumps it off, and it's incomplete. Heavy rush applied from the right side this time, and Freeze only about a two-step drop back. Looked like it was just going to be a quick slant pattern, but uh, didn't have time to even get the ball out. And good defense by the Eastern Eagles. There's the Eastern Root and Section. They brought a few folks. And Keith Gilbertson. Knowing he needs a win here tonight, it's an important game. It's not only a battle for the Governor's Cup. It's the first time that Eastern and Idaho have clashed at the Big Sky level. John Jake getting on the field a little bit late and finally gets set to the near side. Harris in motion, so no setbacks. Four men, five men out in the pattern. And Freeze whips it up the far sideline through the hands of Harris incomplete. Boy, he had him there too, Jeff. It just would have been just a little bit softer. Harris would have had it coming out of the backfield, but his pass was just overthrown him just by a second. Hey, they just got this off with one second to spare, too, as the clock is running down just one second. You'll see Freeze on a straight drop back. Has such beautiful touch. The ball just barely missed it. On the coverage, the middle linebacker, Alan Gilmore. 6-2-2-25 from Richland on that play. Harris had a beat, too. He had a beat by a good step, step and a half. Third down and 10, the Vandals on the 37. Freeze from the pocket. Look at the time. Oh, watch out, though. And able to jump on it for Idaho. One of the interior linemen and Freeze really got popped from behind. He definitely got. We're going to watch this again. He, he didn't know he was there. I don't know if it was an interior lineman or if it was Craig Robinson back blocking. Yeah, I think it was Robinson. Robinson over there, number 85, trying to keep that guy off him. And Freeze, look at the time. Had no idea that there was somebody behind him. And oh, the lick oh. right there. Robinson did a good heads up play by just jumping on the ball. And Mike Kruzich, 6'4, 235, junior out of Seaholm High in Bellingham. 
Got the sack there. Here's Williams. Oh, boy. Ooh. Oh, he gets creamed at the 40. That is a major league hit. <laughs> Roger Cecil, number 43. My goodness. He gets up, just springs right back up to his feet. Vernon Williams, a tough customer. Watch this. Put Watch your, this hit. Put your mouthpiece in on this one, because Cecil's going to tee off. Now, this is a big cement structure here, but the whole place rattled on this hit. Boom. Yeah, well, Ernest Sanders uh, had a little piece in that one, too. 37-yard punt, 10-yard return. Eastern, first down and 10, just over the 40. And that's Williams, who somehow wriggles out of there for about uh, four yards. Vernon Williams, only 5'6", 171 pounds, though. He's only a sophomore, and he is showing some excellent quickness, exploding through the hole, and does a good job of spinning off a couple of tackles. Picked up four yards, Jeff, when he should have been stopped at the line. Sean Moore comes in the Eastern lineup in place of Todd Johnson. And Moore in front of Vernon Williams in the backfield, out of the eye. Double wide, Fleming and Bunsley out to the left. Second down and six, Williams again submarines his way for a couple, three more. Got about three, and they're trying to get the left side again. Corn Smith right there, Pete Wilkins also in number 87, coming up to make the stick. Looks like they're gonna be short a couple. Trying to blow some holes open on the left side. He was trying to go off guard, but didn't see a hole opening up, so he tried to take it off tackle himself, did Vernon Williams, and look, Jeff, coming off the field, he's hurt. That is a tough break for Vernon Williams, and he's just got to be frustrated with the injury as he comes off and just getting healthy last week. So in the backfield replacing him comes Tony Johnson along with Tim Floyd from the eye. Third and three from the 47 of Eastern. Johnson, who is able to power his way with the extra effort for the first down. Lost his helmet on that play, but got the first down. That's what matters, and Johnson just a good heads-up runner. Once again, Jeff, he was stopped at the line of scrimmage, but managed to pick up three yards on just sheer force. Keep those legs a pumping, and he got the first. We'll watch it again. Watch him. He gets stuck right here at the, at the front of the line. Boom. Should have been dropped. Keeps the legs pumping. Picked up another couple, three yards for the first. First down and 10 Eastern. They moved it down to the Vandal into the field, and then Eric Stein missed a 44-yard field goal. The Eagles on the move from the split back alignment this time. Moore and Williams. Snyder off the play action. And they're going to say no, incomplete. Had him for a minute. Nice pass that time by Snyder, but uh, good defense by the Vandals, and the pass was dropped. Ernest Sanders on the coverage, and Aldrich the tight end. Primary receiver on this play, Steve. Well, he had it, too, right in his fingertips, but then the hit right there, and there was no way he could hold on to it coming down. You know, it's interesting because a lot of these kids are from the coast on both sides and had a chance to play each other or with each other, in some cases, on the prep scene. So they know each other very, very well, and there's a lot on the line just besides the fact this is a big, big Sky Conference game. Second down and 10 from the 48. Williams in trouble, and we got a loose football, and Idaho's on it. Come on to play, the battles come up, and boy, I don't know who made the initial hit, but whoever it was, he has to get credit for this, Jeff, because that hit was applied hard. I think it's Sean Moore, the fullback, had the ball, went over the right side, and I didn't see who it was. Did you see who it was no. came up and made the stick? But boy, that was, once again, a major league hit. Cause a fumble, the battles get it. Ernest Sanders jumps on it for the Vandals, and it's first down and 10. Idaho with its first break of the ball game at the 43 of the Eagles. Did you see that little thing right there, too, that John Priest says, okay, guys, we got it. Now settle down a little bit. Don't get too excited. Vandals with four men out in the pattern. Freeze over the middle. Diving reception by Jorgie near a first down. Well, Eric Jorgensen, he's just been all world for the Idaho Vandals this season. Look, look at him, just a skinny little guy, but he does so much. He's got the quickness and everything. This is just a pass that they run a thousand times a week. This time, Freeze goes back and slant pattern. Jorgensen right there. Second down and about a half a yard to go. 35th reception on the year for Eric Jorgensen. He has four touchdowns to show for, show for it. And they are not short touchdowns <laughs> either. We'll get into those a little bit later. He's had some long touchdown passes. Vandals with David Jackson, Neosha Morris, John Jake out to the right, and Hoynes in motion. Freeze. Oh, what a throw to Neosha. Oh, double cut. Oh, 
triple coverage almost. And Freeze, hey, but once again, we've talked about this all season long. Credit the offensive line of the Idaho Vandals. They are giving Freeze all the time, and he's such a good, strong quarterback. Watch this. Three-step drop back. Boom. Right there. Has to go over the defender. Oh, man. And Doug Freeze on target. Great catch by Morris, too, in the crowd. He knew he was going to get popped, but hung on. First down for Idaho at the 10. 3.30 to go. Still no score in the football game. The Vandals trying to cash in on the opportunity. Eastern fumbling near midfield. Big fumble against an opportunistic football team like the Idaho Vandals. It's costly to make those mistakes, especially when you're in your own territory. Cough it up when you're on your own side. Harris in the backfield. He's wanting to throw again. Looking, looking, looking. Swings it out to Robinson. Robinson at the five with a penalty flag down away from the action on the opposite side of the field. Penalty flag thrown. I might be defensive holding or something in the end zone. I don't know. As you see Craig Robinson get up. Boy, that's a blow. Hmm. A little shaky. He might come out for a series or so or a down or so, but Craig Robinson, you can bet your bottom dollar will be back. Not the worthy backup in Chris Slater, but let's see what happens on this play to Robinson. Maybe some defensive holding. You can't see it. It's at the top of the screen where the flag was thrown as they dump it off to number 85, Craig Robinson. Boy, he got hit right in the knee. That had to smart a little bit. A guy in the bottom two kind of gave him an extra little twist on that play at the bottom of the stack. Going to be against Eastern. It had to have been like a, a hold or something. Defensive holding before the pass, first down. You know, and that is a shame for Eastern, Jeff, because the, where the flag was thrown, it was away from the play. They weren't going to that side. It was on the right side that the flag was thrown. The play was developing over to the left side. It went over to Robinson on the left side, and that is a shame for Eastern. So instead of second down and goal at the five, it's first down and goal at the five. So on that play, you just give Idaho another down in four down territory. First and goal of Vandals. Slater in for... Well, actually, no tight ends now, I don't believe. Yes, Slater is two in there. And there is Todd Hoynes, who gets in for the score. Hoynes hit at about the one-yard line, but he had Mr. Momentum behind him, and he just squirted right over there for the first score of the ball game. So the Vandals on the board first, 2.46 to go, first quarter. We'll watch it again. Now, this is the intended receiver, too, on this play. As he comes out of the backfield, nobody picks him up right there. Where's the backers? Nobody was there. Hoynes just goes inside and scores. Watch it from a different angle. Bet they score again. There's a great angle right there. Hoynes just lurches his body over that goal line. Ezekiel off the high snap, and he's able to get it through there. Give Jorgensen credit to so we'll break away. But pardon me, we'll stay here, I guess, with 2.46 to go in the first quarter. 7-0, the Vandals out front, Steve, first. Well, now, see, coming into the ball game uh, tonight, in the last two ball games, Freeze had seven touchdowns, so give him another one. He has eight in the last three games. He's building up more yardage. He's going to have 1,000 uh, yards in his last three games. John Freeze uh, doing such a good job. But I'll tell you what, you know what makes John Freeze? He is a good quarterback, only a sophomore. But the, as good a quarterback as he is, it's because of his offensive line and the capability of his receivers that make him that good. I mean, his receivers, we saw some great catches there. Neosha Morris, um, Todd Hoynes coming out of the backfield, Eric Jorgensen, Craig Robinson, they, just that core of receivers, Lee Allen, they all do such a good job, but the only way that he gets the time to do that is because of his offensive line. Like we've mentioned before, John would be the first guy to tell you that, too. 2.46 to go. It's a 7-0 ball game. The Vandals taking advantage of a miscue by Eastern, a fumble. Now the 45 by Sean Moore, the fullback, and then Vandals working down for the score. Yeah, we didn't get the guy who came up and hit Sean Moore to cause that fumble like we talked about, but uh, you got to give him half of that touchdown because he's the guy who sprang it. That was just a great hit, caused Moore to fumble. Ezekiel, and he's been uh, making a habit of scripping the ball on the ground as of late. This time he'll kick it deep, however. Dropping back near the goal line for Eastern and returning, that's Dominic Core and Core not near the 20 before he's run out of bounds. That's 
Kedrick Jackson downfield making the stop for the Vandals, and it's first down and 10 Eastern from the 21. Eastern's have put up some pretty good yards, but nothing to show for it yet. You see the scoring play, it only took three plays, 44 yards in just a little over a minute, almost a minute and a half. Touchdown pass to Hoynes. First and 10. Well, we don't see Vernon Williams back in there, so apparently the injury serious enough for him not to continue. Toss back to Tony Johnson, who runs the short side and gets two, maybe three. We'll watch it again. Tony Johnson, just a freshman, five foot nine, 193 pounds, pretty good size. Tries the right side, gets a couple before he's dropped. You know, Jeff, Eastern's got to be pretty happy, though, in this first quarter with the little bit of the running game that they've established because we keep harping on it a little bit. But last week against Northern Illinois, they were held to minus 26 yards on the ground. So far against the Vandals, and the Vandals' defense isn't that bad. They're uh, establishing some sort of a running game. Second down and seven. One of the up backs carrying for Eastern. That's Steve Shiroki. A local product, Spokane's West Valley, just a freshman. 214 pound freshman at 5'11. He is a workhorse, big strong kid. This time he gets a call over left side, picks up a couple. Third down now and about uh, two or three to go. Good news for Eastern, they've got Vernon Williams taped up and he's back in the ball game. Bunsley left, Fleming right, tight end Aldridge right. Got two tight ends on this third down and two from the 29. Williams, the first down and more over the 35. Doesn't look like he's too shaken up. This time gets over left side and uh, first time since he got popped. Takes it over. He needed a couple yards. Picked up about seven or eight yards. Gets up a little slow again, though. He's not 100% definitely. You see number 51, Jerry Medved. Linebacker, make the stop. Boy, he hit that outside corner fast, doesn't he? He just blazes right by a guy and he's through for the opening. Picks up seven yards on the first down. Eastern doing a good job on the ground. 37 yard line. First and 10. Left hash. Snyder on the play fake. Near side. Bunsley, great catch. Got hit by Richard Carey, but not before he got the first down. That was concentration. He knew that the guy was behind him, and Bunsley does such a good job. We'll watch it again. That ball was a nicely thrown ball by John Snyder, but he laid it up there maybe just a little bit too much, had a little bit too much loft on it, and he knew he was going to get hit. Did a good job of turning around, faced his defender, didn't take it in the back, took it up the chest high, got driven out of bounds, driven out of bounds, but not before he made the first. First down and 10 at the 48. Eastern moving once again. Robert Jefferson, you now at a wide receiver. On this first down play, and Shiroki for short yards. Steve Shiroki, 214 pounds. They use him for short yardage situations. This time, of course, it wasn't first and 10, but it looked like short yardage. He takes it over the right side, picked up about a yard. You know, you got to admire a team like Eastern Washington that does recruit almost exclusively inside the state of Washington and uh, funding the major reason why. Just wish that uh, they could get some bigger crowds up in Spokane when they play at Albee. It's just a shame that they don't draw more. Good football team. Best game in town. You gotta wonder about it. Second down and nine. And Snyder will hand it back to Warren Williams who jukes for a couple three yards. Bernie Williams will watch him again. Now, boy, watch when he comes up. He comes up so slow. He's just pretty gimpy out there. Number 33 having a pretty good first quarter as it draws to the end. Goes down. Pretty good ball game so far. The Vandals with the early lead, but Eastern beginning to mount a drive. Work the opposite way. Motion, that's Fleming through the formation. Wing Floyd set off to the left. Williams out of the backfield, scurries for the first down, and boy, with a quick feed, gets it to the 45. Boy, he really got driven back after he got to the 45. Roger Cecil out head hunting tonight. That was a great big eight tackle right there, and uh, I think it was John Place who was there. I think it was number 18 who was there, Jeff. Watch it again. I think it was Place who came up and made the stick. Just a little screen right here, get him out of the backfield. Pretty good opening right there, too. You know, watch up here. That was, right. that was John Place coming up right. to make the nice tattoo. And there's Williams, a little gimpy coming off. 
But first down and 10, Williams able to get the necessary yards, and Eastern continuing to move from the Idaho 34. That's Tony Williams, bellying his way for about five. Tony Johnson, pardon me. He's at 193-pound uh, freshman. Does a good job over the right side, picks up about five yards. On the ground, he has three touchdowns, and that leads all the running back corps out of Pasco High School. Pretty decent-looking drive mounted right now by the Eastern Washington Eagles. 42, Tim Floyd comes in. Robert Jefferson checks out. Second down and five after the five-yard carry by Johnson. Single setback. And John Snyder will give it to him. Now flip tackle, and he scrambles for about three. Well, the Eagles content to keep it on the ground. They've been uh, playing the majority of their offensive plays have been on the ground. This time over the left side. A gain of about three yards, about a yard to go for the first. We made mention of the fact that these two teams match up well. Idaho in the conference is seventh against the rush. Eastern, on the other hand, uh, they are ninth in the conference running the ball. So <laughs> the lower end of the statistics, but Eastern moving the ball and Roy Johnson powering for the first. Well, Johnson could smell where the first down line was, Jeff. He just took it over, got popped right at the line of scrimmage. And once again, they are some pretty heavy duty running backs for the Eastern Eagles. Watch it, he gets hit right at the line of scrimmage right there. Manages to keep his feet and keep going a couple more yards for the first down. Good heads up running. See big number 77, Jeff Mickle at 275, the junior who was helping push Johnson a little bit forward, but he also got a nice block that opened the hole for him as well. First down and 10 Eastern here. They are at the Idaho 22. Trying to get even in this ball game. 7-0 to score the Vandals lead it. And Snyder to throw. The tight end, Aldrich, inside the five. Nice grab by Aldrich. He almost missed that one, almost mishandled it, but brings it down, cradles it in there, picks up another first down inside the five-yard line to about the three. Or they're going to mark it on about the two-yard line. You see Brooke Aldrich, 6'5", 234 pounds, a big target. Snyder does a good job of hitting him, too, Jeff. Aldridge lined up on the right side. He's right in the middle of the pocket. Boom. Almost dropped it, brings it down, and just about gets in the end zone. Boy, that looks awful a lot like the crossing pattern that Idaho runs with. Very much so. Craig Robinson, first down and goal. Eastern at the two. Johnson scores. Tony Johnson, they keep it on the ground once more. Why not? First and goal from the two-yard line. Give it to the guy who got you there. That was Tony Johnson having good series this time. Just a freshman. He had three touchdowns, I think you were saying, a minute ago. Now give him four. Boom. Good, good runner. These runners are strong runners. Nice hole open up on the left side, off the offensive side, too. And after the Vandals face two of the better backs in the conference last week and Folger and Floyd, they're really taking on some little-known backs, and these guys are doing a better job. PAT added by Eric Stein, and with 12.32 to go in the first half, we're even. 12.32 to go, first half, and Eric Stein, fine place kicker from Yakima, kicks it off, and John Jake will circle underneath this one at the five. 20, 25, and some more. Oh, we got a little something breaking out uh, on the sidelines there behind the Vandal van bench after the return. These two teams really don't care a whole lot for each other. No, especially, you know, like you talked about earlier, where a lot of them know they've played each other in their prep days in the Seattle area. You just watch, look at the last Eagles scoring drive. But a lot of times there's animosity there because they know about each other. They know that they were probably, a lot of them were legends back then in the school days. And they probably hated each other when they were arch rivals then. And now they're coming back, they're in the college ranks. It's the same thing over again. I imagine that will be the last time we see some heated debate. We had personal fouls both ways on that one too. So the offsetting penalties give Idaho a first down at the 26 yard line. Pretty good looking scoring drive, that last drive by the Eastern Eagles. They mixed up the plays quite a, quite a bit, almost made a touchdown by the pass, kept it on the ground for the touchdown and looked pretty decent. 12.27 to go, first quarter, Idaho set to go to work. Neosha Moore is the motion man. And John Fries with all kinds of time up the near side, and it's Johnny Jake for a first at the 42 of Eastern. And it was Johnny Jake, and he was a man to man with Quentin Blythe, and he just had Blythe beat by about a step, and uh, that's all it took. Fries could see that he had him beat, laid it in there, another nice pass, and 
The Vandals pick up big yardage. Boom, right there. Good enough for a first. Not bad coverage by Blythe, really. Good position by Jake. Perfectly thrown ball by Freeze. First and ten, the Vandals just inside the Eastern 43. Todd Hoynes looking like last week and runs for about seven. They have to get good efforts out of Todd Hoynes. He has not disappointed the Idaho Vandals and head coach Keith Gilbertson yet. This time it takes a handoff from Freeze. Goes over right side. Some pretty good blocks right there. Finds the hole, picks up six yards. At Eric Jorgensen and Neosha Morris throwing some blocks on that play. So these guys aren't just a speed burst. They're not guys that just go out on a pass play. They can block, too. Second down and a long three to go for Idaho. A timing pattern to Neosha for the first down inside the 30. <laughs> Great play. Just a little quick hitter right there to Neosha Morris, who was about to step off the line of scrimmage. And just quick hit. Get it out and go. They needed about three yards to go for the first down. Yosha picks up five in the Idaho first. The battle's not wasting too much time on this drive, Jeff. 11.29 to go. Eastern a short time ago. Tony Johnson carried it in. And that uh, evened our score. Officials are saying something, and I don't know what exactly they could be talking about in the huddle. I wonder if maybe down in the trenches there's a little extracurriculars going on, maybe saying both teams, hey, let's just settle down a little bit and play some football. I don't know if that's the case, but we saw a little uh, heat a while ago. That might have been something to do with it. First down and 10 at the 30. Hoynes off tackle, cuts it upfield. And Hoyt is another nice run. About seven more on that one. And a beautiful block applied by number six, Eric Jorgensen, on this one. We'll watch it again. Jorgensen at the top of your screen goes out right there, makes a nice block, plays off him a little bit. And Hoynes gets a good yardage. Get a chance, Steve, next time. Take a look when Freeze comes up to the line. He'll stop for just an instant and check out the defense, which you call reading what's going on out there. And, of course, John has the opportunity to change the play if he wishes. There he goes right now, taking a look at what's happening in the secondary. One of the hardest things for a quarterback to do coming out of high school into college is finally figure out the read. Second down and two, and Georgie inside the five. Once again, Quentin Blythe was on the defense, but Blythe didn't know that the pass was coming there. He could look into the eyes and see that it was coming, but that was the only way. He had his back turned, didn't know when to put up his arms, and a beautiful pass once again. Blythe makes the tackle coming down, but uh, he was turned around. He didn't know where the pass was. That's when a receiver and a quarterback know more than anyone else knows. Jorgensen, he has such good hands and good concentration, followed it. He knew that his man didn't know where the ball was, and Jorgensen just grabbed it, came down. Idaho looks like they could score again. First down and goal at the three. Robinson again not in there yet. Bruce Harris finds the end zone. Touchdown, Idaho. Over the left side, beautiful holes open up again. Bruce Harris, he needed that one. Get a little self-esteem going again. He's been injured for the last few weeks. Got it over left side and a touchdown. Vandals like to go to that two tight end offense, and on this occasion, Jason Pulliam was in there, lined up on the near side, but Chris Slater, number 94, the top of your screen, cutting inside a block right there. Harris, because of Slater, kicking out. Harris has got to go back to the huddle and say, hey, thank you, everybody, for those blocks. And Dick Zorn's having a word with the official. Zorn's in search of his 60th win. Nine years for the Eastern program, winning percentage of 66%. Not bad. When he took over, Eastern just an NAIA school, but have since jumped up to the Division I AA and now a Big Sky member. And once again, we see the referee conferring. Uh, I just talked to Dick Zorn's. Now he's going over to talk to Keith Gilbertson. Don't quite know what this is all about. You might have had a point alluding to the fact that there could be a little something extra after the play or something being said. We don't know. Maybe we'll have to watch a little bit, watch in the trenches to see if there's anything that we can see. That might not be it at all, but we don't know. Kosekio trying to make it 14 to 7, and he pops her through. So 10-20 to go, first half, and the Vandals back in front. 
lead Steve Michael bust in with 10.20 to go in the first half. 14 to 7, the Vandals, a nice looking drive, respond to that Eastern touchdown and are back in front. Well, we kind of thought maybe coming into this ballgame we could see some high explosive offense and started out a little bit slow as both teams kind of feeling each other out early in that first quarter, but uh, the last couple times everybody's touched the ball, we've seen points produced on the scoreboard, so we could be in for a big scoring night. Ezekiel skids it on the ground and takes a hop into the hands of Kim Floyd. Floyd over the 35 and Eastern with decent field position to start at the 38. Tim Floyd, kind of a familiar name. No, this is not the Idaho Vandal basketball coach. <laughs> right. You see that last scoring drive, only two minutes, a little over two minutes, 74 yards, six plays, that two-yard run by Bruce Harris over the left side. First down and 10, Eastern, as his offense is trying to get a little bit tuned now. 10-17 to go, and John Snyder. The sophomore set to go to work from a 38. Single setback. That's Johnson. Johnson gets away from Roger Cecil and over the 40 for some extra yards. Cecil has played a good ball game defensively for the Vandals, Jeff. He's going to be number 43 coming up from the screen in your screen, making the initial stop to slow down the runner. That Cecil right there slows him down a little bit. Almost gets him, but everybody else converges. Nice job by Raj. And Jerry Medved helping out 51, one of the stoppers there to polish him off. Four-yard gain, second and six. Fleming left, Bunsley and Jefferson out to the right. Single setback, Johnson. And Johnson, there's Cecil yeah, making Cecil up again. Shirt tackle he missed last time. Roger Cecil and uh, Ernest Sanders coming up to give him a little help, and Ernest Sanders gives him a shove, too, when he comes off of it. We'll watch it again, number 43, just playing an excellent ball game. Some good blocks up there, but 43 following the play, plays off a block, gets him Ernest Sanders right there. Didn't like the extra hit he achieved. You didn't see it in your screen, but coming back up after that play, uh, Sanders had a couple of words. 9 0 to go, third quarter, uh, second quarter. Snyder out of Lake Washington High School in Kirkland gives the ball to Johnson, and Johnson tripped up underneath. Cord Smith, the first man to get a hand on him. Kind of a delayed draw this time, but Cord Smith saw it coming. He plugged the hole and grabbed him down, got back to the line of scrimmage, but that's about all. We'll watch it again. Watch number 99. Goes back like he's going to pass. Gives it to him on the draw. Smith plugs the whole place off his block just exactly like you're supposed to. Stops him. Kevin Johnson also helping out on the stop. Eric Stein for his second punt of the game. And he hits another beauty. Can you understand why he's first in the nation? Lee Allen uh, faking like he was going to make the catch without a signal and lets it go into the end zone. So with 8.18 to go here in the fair staff, you see the score. Money to throw, swings it out. That's Neosha Morris. Oh, a nice oh. move by Neosha. And knocked down around the 25. I give credit to Eastern for hanging in there on that play and finally tripping him up. That's tough to, tough to do when you're going that far or that, that fast laterally to stop and then try to cut back against the grain is tough to do. Watch again, freeze rolling out. Neosha right there, stops and cuts back right there, almost sprung it, did spring it for a couple more, but almost sprung it for big yardage. Jason Elliott, the free safety out of Kashmir on the play, but Neosha able to fake him first. Bruce Harris, sweeping far side. And Harris, uh, with a pile of white jerseys on top, tries to Lurch is way near the first down marker. Comes up a little bit short. Well, the Eagle defense that time led by middle linebacker Al Alan uh, Gilmore. Number 58 following the play did a good job of getting the ocean, but the ocean still had some yardage. It's third and about one to go for the Vandals. 7.16 to go. An entertaining first half it has been. And the Idaho's, lo Idaho's looking at third and a yard. Trips it near side, but check out Todd Hoynes. We'll get the football and also get hit in the backfield. Oh, he was going nowhere. And the first guy there for the Eagles, right tackle, Jim Furster, 6'5", 248, the senior out of Rogers High in Spokane. Watch it. Watch number 71. Saw a play coming up. Got rid of his man, just shook him off, and Hoyas absolutely nowhere to go. Nice defense. Excellent defense. Got a new punt return man back there for Eastern, and that is Kevin O'Connor. 
in place. Wobbly spiral taken by O'Connor at the 35. Near side, oh, he's able to get away and then stumbles inside Idaho territory. 35-yard punt on that one by plays. Jim Medved was the man coming up to make the tackle for the Idaho Vandals as the Vandals defense comes back out. Eastern looked pretty good last time. As you see the Big Sky standings, Weber State, look at that. 6-1 overall, 4-0 in the Big Sky. The Vandals in second place, 3-1. A couple of people, Boise State, Eastern at 2-2. Two and two. Montana, 2-3. Two Nevada, Reno, 2-2. Two 4-3 two. overall. Nevada, Reno was beaten this weekend by Stephen F. Austin, 9-7. Non-conference game, of course. First down and 10 Eastern from the Vandal 49. Snyder with no fake to throw. Down the middle, and he's got his man. First down, Todd Johnson. The senior out of Hope, Idaho at 6'1 and 214. Able to get free. Snyder with a nice pass, too, Jeff. Had some good protection. Five-step drop back, hooked over to his left. Had some good zing on the ball to get it over the linebackers, and coming down with the catch was the Eastern Eagles. They had a first down inside the 25-yard line, about the 24. There's a good look at the Hope product. Wasn't expected to see a whole lot of action, but he's in there right now. First down and 10 at the 24 of Eastern uh, of Idaho. Johnson. This is Tony Johnson who cuts it up the hash mark and runs it out for about seven yards. Tony Johnson, that's the same play that he scored the touchdown on over left side. This time again gets it. He's a big heads-up runner. Only a freshman, but weighs close to 200 pounds. Gets that uh, good speed going too, Jeff, and he's a tough target to bring down. 5.38 to go, first half. 14-7 the Vandals, but Eastern moving. Second down and four. Quick out, Snyder throws quickly, incomplete. Tended for Bunsley. Once again, one of those quick slant patterns. Looks like one of the playbooks of the Idaho Vandals. This time thrown behind him, there was no chance for it. Brings up a third down now and about four to go for Eastern. A lot of talented receivers in the big sky, Bunsley being one of them. Well, I think as far as, as fans' appreciation and the fun, the Big Sky Conference is great. When they put the ball in the air, you see a lot of good offense. It's fun to watch. Third down and four. Another big down for the Eagles from the Vandal 24. Snyder tosses it back to Johnson. Johnson in heavy traffic, and he's nailed by Jerry Medved. Well, short of a first down, number 51. Eating nails down there and making the play. Watch the man who makes this play happen defensively for the Idaho Vandals, number eight, Ernest Sanders. Watch right there. Turns it inside. He wanted to go outside. Ernest Sanders right there to turn the play inside. Everybody else there to make the play for the Vandals defensively. Ernest Sanders is, is uh, as, at the strong safety, plays great for the Vandals. So here's Stein on for a 37-yard field goal. He missed from 44 the first time. Hooked his last one to the right. This time it's set up over on the left hash. Stein, 5 of 10 on the year. And it's a fake. Or is it a fake? I don't know. I don't know either. That was, a, <laughs> that was really a peculiar play. I don't know if it was that or if he... I, I, I don't know. Hopefully it, we'll have this again. It's Todd Johnson, but not fooling Idaho. Boy, this is something I have never seen before. <laughs> I don't know how that would have worked. Did he kick the ball, Steve? I don't know. I, I, I think he kicked it. I don't know. It, it was either like he kicked he it or they gave it to him. We'll watch it again. I don't know what happened. Keep in mind the... Uh, short... Here we go. No, no. It was a play. Drew Azure is the holder there and he just kind of flipped it out on the shovel pass yeah. to Todd Johnson. Exactly what it was. A little shovel pass over to him. They tried to surprise the Vandals, but uh-uh. Boy, good defense on that fourth down fake. First I like that. Ten. Good gutsy call. Didn't fool the Vandals. Neosha Morris splits the defense for about eight. There's that quick hitter again. The Vandals got, got a uh, first down earlier with that play. This time over on the left side in Neosha Morris. He picks up about eight yards. We'll watch it again. Just boom. Look at, Freeze almost throws it like a shot put right there. That's a shot put play. I like that good play going back, though, to the fake field goal. That was kind of a neat play. Almost worked, too, for Eastern. Good defense, heads-up defense by the Vandals, though. Second down and about a yard and a half. Another timing pattern to Johnny Jake, who makes a reception and circles back to the <laughs> inside. <laughs> and like a pinball, continues up to the 32-yard uh, line. 
Well, Jake uh, knows he's supposed to turn his clock back tonight, but he almost got <laughs> turned back tonight. Boy, now watch this hit. He's going forward, and all of a sudden, he's backwards. Does a great job. Good move. Nice perk and jerk move right there. Gets hit right there. Gets knocked into tomorrow. And that's all he's going to get. First down, though, for the Vandals. 428 to go. Big play on this last drive for Eastern. Idaho held on the fake field goal. First down and 10 from the 33. Bruce Harris. Oh, here comes the linebacker to drag Mark him down. Mark Matt. No. Anthony Witten. Yeah, Anthony Witten. Sophomore out of Seattle. Was not to be denied. Nobody Boy. came up there and he just uh, did it. Oh, look at him, too. He's a little pumped up now defensively for Eastern. Second 14, a four-yard four drop on the play. Are we going to get a chance to see John Priest throw the ball here? <laughs> Second and 14, nah. <laughs> Lee Allen wide out to the left. Eric Jorgensen wide split to the right, and the Osha Morris in the slot. Freeze over the middle. Chris Slater inside the 15. Well, when you don't have Craig Robinson in the lineup, what are you going to do? You're going to go to your next guy, Chris Slater, number 94, coming from the right side, a wide open down the middle. Picks up about 20 yards in an Idaho Vandal first down. We'll watch it again from ground level. Freeze once again, protection plus. It's over the right side, number 94. Gets a catch. Got, took a pretty good hit right there, too. Goes down, Idaho Vandal first down. 3.23 to go first half. Boy, that was a nice conversion there. Don't know the extent of the injury to Craig Robinson. But Slater really picked up the slack on that one. First down play from the 48. Freeze setting up the screen. Swings it out to Harris. And Harris uh, got knocked out after a nice defensive play. I'm trying to see. I think that is... Uh, I think it's Andre Kaur. Andre Kaur wasn't expected to see any action tonight. Dominic, his brother, was replacing him. But Andre in there. Set it up. Screen the whole way. Get it off over on the left side to Bruce Harris. Harris tried to get it around there. But uh, Kaur was right there to drop him after only a two-yard pickup. continue to run Jeff two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half the Vandals with a, just a slim 14-7 lead and facing second down and eight trip set to the near side one out to the left freeze in trouble loose football and oh there's Witten on it for Eastern and we got some flags after the play something breaking out well a big turnover in this game and John Freeze, I was watching him when he got up. He got up, and he's walking off the field under his own power and everything. It doesn't look like he's shook up, but he really took a bad hit right there. That's going to hurt a little bit. Good defense, though. And Witten, who just made a nice play defensively not long ago, able to jump on it. See if these flags are going to go against uh, Let's find out. Oh, it's going to be tacked on after the play on the Vandals. That's a big one. <laughs> is not filled to capacity but boy it sounds like it on that because uh, everybody does not like the call the officials trying to keep order in this ball game early and look all of a sudden with two minutes and 23 seconds to go jeff they're knocking on the door at the vandal 22. closing moments of the first half idaho was able to take an opportunity uh, on a fumble and score see if eastern can do the same crowd still a little bit uneasy over that last one First down at the 22. Snyder for the end zone. Bunsley, touchdown. Beautiful pass. Excellent pass. Coverage was there. The Vandals played it just about as well as you can, but just a beautiful pass. Got to give all the credit in the world to John Snyder. And Bunsley, not a bad catch either in a crowd. That was a beautiful catch, too, but this pass was right on the money. Bunsley goes up, gets it, gets hit, but not after he crossed the, the end zone line. Another touchdown. We've got ourselves almost a tie ball game. It's 14-13. Take a look at it for the third time. You're right, Steve. Perfect throw. It was. Had to thread the needle. Stein makes it a tie ball game with 2.17 to go in the first half. So both these teams, after a fumble, take it in and score. That's exactly right. You give them a advantage. 
advantage of any kind, and both these teams have that good potent offense that they can do it. I'm very impressed with the Eastern Eagles coming off that disappointing home homecoming last week, lost to Northern Illinois. They're coming down into the confines of the Kibbe Dome, and they're making a very good ball game out of it. 14-14 with 2.17 to go in this first half. 17 though is, is all the time in the world for the Idaho Vandal offense. John Freeze and company will come out here with 217. That could be 12 minutes of 17. They don't even need it. They can come down the field in no time and score on you. But Eastern coming back after that causing that fumble. Pretty good defensive ball club, especially their secondary ranked first in the conference. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining, by the way. Good ball game so far. We expected it to be. A lot more on the line than just for the Big Sky Conference. Last year, the Vandals beat him 27 to 10. Scott Linehan had his best day ever as a Vandal in that ball game. Who can forget the playoff game of 85, though, when Eastern and Jamie Townsend worked it down the field and pulled one out in Dennis Erickson's last game here with Idaho. John Jake returning for the Vandals, and John continues to... Well, there's a little, uh, a little something after that play, too, breaking out. I think the referees are going to be glad when halftime. Maybe they can. Uh, some of these players can go and douse their head in ice and cool off a little bit because tempers are flaring. First down and ten in the so the Vandals take it over. First down and ten, just short of the 30-yard line. You know, this is going to be a good test for John Freeze. You'll remember his last play. He really got popped from the blind side. Didn't see it coming. That had to shake him up a little bit. I wonder if he's going to be a little gun shy. Really haven't seen that much this year. He's been hit twice hard in this game. First and ten, Freeze from the pocket. Down the middle, Slater was there. Oh, yeah, there's the a flag. flag. No question about that one. Looks like there were Siamese twins going down the field. You can't do that. You can play defense, but you can't hold somebody. We'll watch it again. I think it was Brad Baker, maybe, number 51, who was following him and had his arm wrapped around him. You cannot do that. First down for the Vandals. Shows you the confidence the Vandals have in their backup tight end and Chris Slater going back to him once again. Of course, that big play on the last Idaho possession. Defensive pass interference. 51. First down. Chris Slater is still a, kind of a big guy. He's six foot three, so only gives up an inch as far as height to Robinson. But uh, Jeff, he's pretty slight. The difference in weight between he and Robinson, 230 pounds is Craig Robinson, and Slater at only 209. Pretty quick, though. Pretty quick tight end. First down and 10, the Vandals at the 45. Freeze in the pocket. Throws. Got Jake going. He's knocked down short of a first down. Well, Jake knew where he had to go to get the first down, but there was just no way he was going to escape the grasp of the defender. That looked like it was Quentin Blythe on the defense for the Eastern Eagles, and he just couldn't quite get it. Good defense. 58's uh, the linebacker, Gilmore, and then Blythe finally making the play. Second down in the yard at the 47 of Eastern. Vandals with the clock rolling. 135 to go in the half, and Todd Hoynes for the first down inside the 45. Still three timeouts remaining, and Steve, like you said, that's a lot of time to give John Freeze 2-10 to go on the clock. Oh, especially where the ball is right now, too, Jeff. It's over on the side of the Eastern Eagles. It's on uh, the Eagle 45-yard line, so that's not far to go, especially when you're riding the arm of a John Freeze. That clock is melted down to a minute 18 right now, though, and running. Harris leaves the formation. Freeze looking to throw quickly over the middle. The Osha Morris dragged down short of a first down. Another nice defensive play by Kaur. Hey, he was on him, too. Andre Kaur was all over him like a blanket, but just a nice pass and a great catch by the Osha Morris, too. That's some good handwork right there by the Osha Morris to catch that pass. And good handwork by Kaur to bring him, uh, bring him down. Second down and one. Freeze tosses it up the sidelines. Lee Allen with a first down at the 13. Well, kind of a mismatch. It was Lee Allen against a strong outside backer. That was Brad Baker, and uh, Lee Allen just had him twisted all around. It reminded me of like Steve Largent last week's game, as he had those guys every which way but lose. This time, uh, Lee Allen had him wide open, got it out of bounds too. 46 seconds to go. The Vandals are knocking. 14 straight. That's 14 straight. Uh, as you hear Pat Weiss over our shoulder, let us know that John, after a little bit of a slow start, <laughs> and you just don't even realize that. I had no idea it was 14 straight completion. 
He started out two for five and now 14 straight. First down and 10 at the 13. Freeze looking over the middle. Jorgensen had it but couldn't hang on. Oh. He got nailed. He got nailed. Get up, Eric Jorgensen. And he is not. He's not moving. He got hit by three guys. Boy. You hate to see that, but boy, he got popped not by one guy, not by two guys, but three guys. I thought he was laying there just because he was frustrated, and then, poof. It looked like, I don't know if this is a catchable ball or if it's thrown just a little bit behind him. We'll watch it again, just a straight drop back by Freeze. Looks over his left side. Ooh. And, ooh. Oh, he got hammered between those two guys. That was a free safety, Jason Elliott, who delivered the blow. Watch it from the ground level. <laughs> See number 17 and number 35 helping out a little bit on that too, Kevin O'Connor. Well, they've got Jorgensen sitting upright. That's a good sign. Break out the smelling salts. Well, he did take a pop. Well, you know, O'Connor is down too. You, you can't see it in the picture right there, but a little to the left of the screen there, O'Connor is also down for Eastern. Well, Jorgensen's getting up under his own power, so he'll be glad there's only 42 seconds. Boy, he's a little washy getting up. He did take one magnificent hit though. Forty-two seconds to go, and uh, now O'Connor is going to be okay. Also, as you see, Jorgensen get up, and there's O'Connor. O'Connor walking off his power too. So both people walking off the sidelines a little gingerly, but underneath their own power, as they're taking Jorgensen out of the building right now, back into the dressing rooms, Jeff. He's still not walking very well. Start asking questions like what day it is. <laughs> Who are playing? Star. <laughs> Boy, that was a hit. Good camera work once again by our KUID crew. And there's an end zone view of it. Second down and 10 from the 13. John Freeze checking things out before he takes the snap from Steve Unger. That's the Ocean Morris number five through the picture. John for the end zone. John Jay! It was out of the end zone. Oh, and John Jake is not happy, and neither is Lee Allen. Lee Allen was coming in from the right side, had a good view of it. He says, hey, we made it. But, but they're going to say no way as he was out of bounds, out of the end zone. Oh, this is as close as you can get. Look at that pass. What a great catch, too. Does he come down in bounds? No, nope, good no. call, good call. He was about a yard out. Pushed out by the defender, Quentin Blythe. Nice play defensively. Quentin Blythe, they're picking on him a little bit tonight, Jeff, and he makes a great defensive play this time. Third down and 10, 37 seconds, first half. We're tied at 14. Breeze, same play, and this oh. time overthrown to Jake. John Jake had his man beat by just a step. Once again, who was it they're picking on? Quentin Blythe, number one. They're going step for step with each other, and just the pass thrown about a yard over Jake's hands. There was no chance for a reception. We've seen John Freeze make this connection with John Jake more than one time in the corner of the end zone. Jake came into the ball game with six touchdowns to his credit. That's second best in the conference at the receiving end. I still think that's one of the prettiest plays in football. Just throw it up there in the corner of the end zone. Now remember, the holder here on this play is normally Eric Jorgensen, but backup quarterback Steve Nolan will come in to hold it, and Brian DeSicchio misses off to the left. You can hear that he missed that one. He really scuffed it on the kick. It was off to the left, no good. We remain tied, 29 seconds to go. Wow. So Eastern comes away with a sigh of relief. Yeah, they're coming away uh, breathing a little easier right now, 29 seconds. I don't know if they'll want to go for a bundle this deep in their own territory or just keep it on the ground and be content with a 14-14 halftime score with only 29 seconds to go. Three timeouts to go, first half. See how John Snyder approaches things. Snyder back after two weeks injured. He looks top form right now. And he's going to hand it off to Tony Johnson. And look out. Johnson finds a seam up the near sidelines and gets out of bounds at the 40. Boy, big play. I'm impressed with the young freshman Tony Johnson. Like we talked about, kind of a big guy, about 195, almost 200 pounds. Has excellent speed out of the backfield. And Eastern is spent a timeout with 16 seconds to go. 
Well, it gives them a little bit more breathing room. Maybe with 16 seconds to go, you want to air it out a little bit. They're down on the 40 yard, their own 40 yard line with 16 seconds to go. And you got a guy like Eric Stein, who, although he is not connected on a field goal tonight, there's some things to keep in mind. And we talked about it earlier in the ball game. The Vandals first in the conference in passing and the Eastern uh, down on the list. But look at pass defense, Steve. You got the two best pass defenses and passing offenses in the conference here tonight. And look right behind that one. The rushing offense, EWU ranked last. 57 yards a game is all, hey, they've got a lot more than 57 yards on the ground in this game, I think, in the first half. They're really looking good that way. Interesting to see how many total offensive yards Eastern has so far in this game, 273. They will probably go well over that tonight. 16 seconds to go. John Snyder sets his Eastern Eagles. 14-14 ball game. Wideouts both sides, wing left, one setback for Snyder. And Snyder's had time to throw, and he'll float a screen to Johnson, and Johnson Gets met by, uh, met by Kevin Johnson, who throws him out of bounds. They did get out of bounds. Eight seconds to go now. We'll watch it again. Eight seconds to go, Steve. 14-14 game. Snyder, little screen. Johnson, uh, I think Kevin Johnson played it well. I think Snyder might have taken too much time setting that play up, Jeff. The, they had 16 seconds to go. They probably wanted to get within field goal range. And, boy, he went back a little bit too nonchalantly, took eight seconds off the clock. They got it out of bounds, eight seconds to go. And they're not even close to field goal range right now. That was number 75, Steve Hine, who was trying to make a block on Johnson. But like you said, maybe just taking a little bit too much time, letting it formulate. See Keith Gilbertson walking down the sidelines and... Uh, Go in at halftime. Looks like he might go in tied up 14-14. John Freeze, good picture of the quarterback. So he looks like without the helmet. He's taking some pretty good pops. He and Eric Jorgensen are going to go in there and talk about some war stories at halftime. Well, interesting situation here. Is Snyder going to try to throw it down there far enough to get Eric Stein in field goal range? Or is he going to go deep and maybe burn Idaho for a big one? Whatever he does, he's going to have to do it a little quicker than that last play. Eastern with one timeout remaining. That's Bensley who comes set in the slot. Long count by Snyder from the 42 on second and seven. Here comes the rush and Corey Smith knocks him down at the 35. That about does it. Halftime. Final play of the half. Take a look at it. Idaho in the prevent defense, Steve. Well, they were. They were in the prevent. Court Smith, number 99, coming up there, knocking him down. Last play of the half. Court Smith, excellent deed. There's uh, an example of the time Freeze had, but all of a sudden, from nowhere, came big number 94 Eastern, and that was uh, Mike Prusich. That was hit number one. Right. This one's Todd Hoynes going through and scoring the first touchdown of the ball game for the University of Idaho Vandals. And John Snyder to his big tight end, Aldrich. This set up the first score for Eastern. This is the score right here. Tony Johnson going in for the score. Tony Johnson's been doing a good job because the starter, uh, Vernon Williams, has been out. Freeze, once again, this is a good example of how much time, and it was an excellent pass. That was to John Jake. Freeze again going over the right side this time. I think that was Jorgensen going up in a crowd to make that touchdown. And here's the run by Bruce Harris. Uh, great block by Hoynes and Chris Sly uh, Slater sweeping out on that play. This is uh, Tony Johnson one more time, breaking a couple of tackles, bringing it down. 44-yard field goal fake. This was a good play. Almost got him, but the Vandals converged quickly to bring him down just before he gets over to the first down marker. From the angle we looked at it, it almost looked like he kicked it. Once again, Freeze setting up. Over on the right side. That was a nice looking play. That was a very nice play. Snyder. Snyder had a good first half. This is the touchdown pass. Jamie Bensley. And John Freeze to Eric Jorgensen, and that is the shot he took. Uh, it didn't look quite as bad at that angle, but he really got nailed by the free safety. And Brian DeSicchio failing on a field goal attempt. 
This is the last play of the first half. Cord Smith, number 99, coming from the right side. No time. John Snyder had no time on the clock, and the clock wound down. That's where we stand, 14 to 14 at halftime. 14 yards in the ground, and coming into the game, EWU had 57 yards average per game. They have 92 in the first half alone, so the Eagles have 218 yards to 203 for the Vandals. Time of possession is pretty even. First down's pretty even. Turnovers, only one turnover each team. And both teams cashed in on it, too, put it in the end zone. So. Very costly turnovers. You're exact, exactly right. Total yards for Eastern... Uh, 273 they average for the year and you can see right there with John Snyder in the lineup and also find Tony Johnson who's playing one of his better games that they've got that uh, not far away right now from what they're averaging here in the first half. Dick Zorns has got to be pleased with the 92 yards in the ground. You'll remember last week against Northern Illinois up in Joel Albion, Spokane. The Eagles were held to minus 26 yards on the ground. They've got Just looking on the sidelines Jeff and they uh, during the breaks they had the camera over on the sidelines and I have not seen number six anywhere around. Yeah, or Craig Robinson, another man to consider number 85. We'll find out on this first series. And we get word now they will not return. And we'll tell you more in a second as Lee Allen gets it to the 25 before he's knocked down. Eric Jorgensen, as you might imagine, a concussion. And Robinson, oh, torso, ligaments in his left knee. Oh, that is just bad news. And Preliminary he, says also, Jeff, that he could be lost for the season. Yeah, that is just, uh, mounts the, uh, adds to the mounting injuries Idaho's had all season long. Well, they definitely have, but Chris Slater's done a good job since filling in for Craig Robinson in this ball game, and he is a good one. And the Idaho's set to go, first down and 10 at the 25. John Fries, five in out in the pattern, swings it to Todd Hoynes. And Hoynes for about four. Utilizing his safety valve again. He's looking up the right side or the left side, trying to find somebody out on a fly pattern. Nobody was there. Hoynes got the call and picks up a couple yards. And Todd Hoynes was getting up a little bit slow, it looked like, out of the bottom of that pile up. See if uh, Hoynes is going to have to limp off. Boy, boy, you wonder. Oh, when it rains, it pours. One reprieve, the Vandals did get Bruce Harris back this week. He played a pretty good first half for the Vandals. And Idaho right now with David Jackson, you see him going in motion after being lined up as a running back. Freeze up the far sidelines, and Jackson's the target for a first down. Well, they put him in motion, and he is the man who comes down with it. David Jackson, number 25, another small guy, 5'7", 152-pound sophomore. He's the guy at the top of your screen in motion. He just skirts it up the left sidelines. Freeze goes, isolate, get him, and good enough for a first down. And he beat the Eastern linebacker, the middleman, Alan Gilmore. So you got the middle linebacker on David Jackson. Definite mismatch. First down and 10, the Vandals from the Eastern 46. First possession of the second half. 14-14 ball game, and we're early in this half. Bruce Harris, loose football, and what do you know is going to roll out of bounds. That'll give the Vandals a first down. Oh, that's designed as a play. They call that one a play. Bruce Harris just throws it out there, and then they get it another <laughs> a first down. I'm just kidding. They can't do that. But boy, Bruce Harris got very lucky, Jeff. Let's see where the hip... Oh, they just strip him right there. Oh, boy. Now, look the ball if you're going to get a chance to see it. There, just there it is. Oh. And Andre Cora was the guy coming up to strip the football away from Bruce Harris. Luckily for the Vandals, it went out of bounds, and the Vandals picked up a first down. At the 33. Point us back in there. Freeze. Intended for Allen down near the 10, overshot. You know, that's maybe the poorest thrown pass we've seen by John Freeze as he threw that one out of bounds. There was a flag at the, on the play up in the vicinity where it probably would be like an offensive holding call. We haven't seen a lot of flags in this game. Freeze going back, talking to one of his threats. That was he's talking to Chris Slater. You know, there has only been one uh, turnover by each team, and there has not been a lot of penalties. It's been a pretty well-played ball, ball game. They, both teams started out a little bit slow in the first quarter. They got things going in the latter part of that quarter, and in the sec start of the second quarter played pretty well, and then kind of slacked off in the last Holding part of the on the offense, still first down. That is the call holding against the offense. So the Vandals uh, first down and 20 to go. Freezing that first half, by the way, 16 of 22 for 188 yards and one TD. Not bad numbers. One time he had 14 straight completions. 
And John trying to start another string, and he throws underneath and short, intended for Bruce Harris. Well, he had to throw that one quickly because of the rush applied. This time, uh, I believe it was DJ Siegertson coming in for Eastern. He had to get rid of it in just a nice rush. Couldn't get, quite get it over on the side to Harris, who made a lunging effort, but no go. Second down and 20. At the 42, 14-14 game, Eastern and the Vandals. The Governor's Cup, if you will. These two have met only six times in their history. Idaho winning four. Grace, and he set up the screen to Hoynes. Hoynes runs away from the tackler, lowers his head, and gets inside the 35. Hoynes did this on his own. He avoided a couple of tacklers. And remember, he got a little bit shaken up a couple plays ago, so he's a little bit hurt. But it didn't look like it this time. Little swing pass, number 20 in the backfield. Sets up, pretend like he's gonna block, and then goes out on the pattern. Follows his blockers, escapes a tackle right here, and picks up another 10 yards. Good job. Back to near the original line of scrimmage. So it's third down and 11 at the 33 of the Eagles. Morrison Jackson left to the near side. Allen and Freeze over the middle. Now they're going to say, are they going to be ruling this a fumble? Uh, no, I think so. Are they going to say a catch and the ball downed? It Eastern looks, wants a fumble. But it looks like from the disgust on Eastern's face, they might say that it is going to be ruled afterwards. So that the play stands for Idaho. Boy, Lee Allen really got nailed here when he made the crab. Watch, Watch this again. again. Reverse angle. Breeze sets up, has good time. Oh, yeah, good call. Good yep. call, at least from here, and it, unless that ball somehow came out in there, and it looked like it, at least from here, it did not. Looks like Jackson's back had hit the ground and then caused the fumble. Of course, he was down at that moment of contact. Vandals first and 10 at the Eastern 20. A couple of lucky breaks on this drive for the Vandals. Breeze. Swings it out to Morris. Miocha scampers away and gets close to first down yardage. Well, this once again, it was Miocha Morris against Andre Kaur, and Miocha just kind of shakes off Kaur and gets enough for the first down. The Vandals having a pretty decent looking drive. Gets it right here and just shakes him off, gives him a little stiff arm. And cuts it down, gets out of bounds inside the 15-yard line, all the way down to about 11. And Miocha gave us a little smile as he went by our KUID camera. Second down and a yard at the 11. The handles on this drive had a ball roll out of the hands of Bruce Harris, out of bounds for about five more yards in a first down. Praise for the end zone, incomplete, and picked off. Well, I couldn't even see that one happen. It happened so fast, the ball coming out of the hands of the intended receiver. And it again, I think that that was Quentin Blythe, wasn't it? Blythe, number one Quentin coming Blythe. down with it. He's the guy they picked on a little bit. Boy, oh. he got his head ripped off that <laughs> Simon Blythe right there to come up with the interception, first interception of the ball game. Reverse angle, we'll watch it again. Boy, what a shot by number 17 right there, Jason Elliott, the free safety. He clobbered the intended man. The intended man was David Jackson, who goes back a little bit wobbly, too. First down and 10. There is some vicious hitting going on right now. At the 20. John Snyder and Vernon Williams is back in the backfield and Williams gets the call and he's tripped up by Cord Smith. <laughs> Cord Smith playing some good ball. Had a great game last week. Continuing it again this week. Does a good job of getting through his blockers. Stopping him. You know, Jeff, this game looked like it was going to turn into a pretty good offensive struggle there in the second quarter, the early part of the second quarter. And all of a sudden since then it has stopped and has become a defensive uh, specialist type of a game. Second down and 10. Williams able to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Vandals with a four-man front. Pete Wilkins playing at the defensive end. He started at linebacker. Long count by Snyder from the I formation. Johnson runs up through an avenue and brings it out over the 25. Johnson's had a better ball game by far than Williams has in this game. Jim Root is coming up and doing a good job defensively for the Vandals. Number 75, pursuit following the play, comes up, helps out making the tackle. Big third down in four play. It's been a wild second half so far. The Vandal crowd coming alive, trying to get the defense going. Here comes Ernest.
Dennis Sanders on a blitz, but Snyder throws quickly to Bunsley, and I think he's going to have enough for the first. Let's see if we're, the spot is going to get him enough. He has oh, to get, looks very like, close. on the vandal side of the 30, and where they're spotting it, it looks like it's going to be on the vandal side of the 30. And I thought where he caught it, he had the first down with the spot. It's a first. It is a spot. They did bring it out to about an extra yard or so on the spot. So nice play by Snyder and Bunsley to pick up the first. They needed the necessary yardage and picked her up. third quarter clock rolling high ball game at 14 the Randalls and Eastern Johnson and the Blues football Virgil Paulson Virgil Paulson coming up for the University of Idaho Vandals to jump on that fumble Jim Rudis was the man who uh, caught the fumble for the Idaho Vandals. Rudis and Corey Smith combatants on that one to drive the ball loose, and Idaho gets a break. Watch again, look for number 75 right there. Comes up, makes a hit right there. Boy, I think that might have been uh, somebody else from behind, too, Steve, that stripped the ball out of there. Reach just reached around. Yeah, yeah I don't rip it out. Couldn't tell who the, the number was, but then Virgil Paulson, number 29, coming up to pounce on it, and the Vandals get it. First down and 10. Poinus. And the Hoquiam product buries his way to the 21. Very near a first down. They're going to spot him a yard short. Nine-yard carry on that one by Todd Hoynes. We'll watch it again. You saw six foot one, 207-pound Todd Hoynes. Gets it over left side. A couple of good blocks again, but then just does it. It just uh, got right through a tackle right there. Picks up good yardage. Second and about one and a half to go. Finally taken down by Kevin O'Connor. Second and a yard. Trip set to the near side, and Harris leaves the formation after the left. Breeze with time. Fires Slater. First down to the 10. Chris Slater, you'll remember, came into the ball game to replace the injured Craig Robinson, who could possibly be out for the season for the Vandals, doing a good job. He's had about three catches. This time it picks up enough for the first down. The Vandals at about the 10-yard line. You know, with all the Vandals' depth, it's, that's, that's what's gotten them where they are right now, Jeff. They've had so many injuries this season, but they have such good depth. This is the second string tight end, Chris Slater, coming up with a big, nice grab for a first down. And a good-looking one, too. First and goal. Whitus. Ho, oh, ho. Oh. He took that up the middle. He was supposed to go and look like off right guard. Saw that there was an opening, an open avenue right up the middle. Took it up there, bounced off a couple of people, caught a hoinus. He did that on his own. Ten yard touchdown run. Watch. It looked like he was going to go over there, but then just thought of that the opening right up the middle and took it. Played a little pinball, bouncing off a couple people and scores a touchdown for the Vandals. Good line blocking, but an eight great individual effort. About three times worth for Hoinus. Good reaction time. Saw the little hole open and just took it right down. Seatfield for an important PAT, and he knocks her home, and we've got a 21-14 ball game. Timeout, 9.48 to go. People tonight, Pat Weiss and Mark Stokes, and with 9.48 to go in the third quarter, the Vandals, after losing it on an interception, getting it back on a fumble, finally end up with a Todd Hoynes touchdown run. Ezekiel. Watch it again. Just kind of took his eye off up for just for one split second. That's all it took, and the Vandals just about came away with another big one. That's Dominique Core, his brother Andre, playing on the defensive side at the cornerback position. You know something, Jeff, in this ball game tonight, the Eastern Eagles have only turned the ball over twice. Both of those turnovers have resulted in touchdowns by the Vandals. Stepping on the run back, still first down. See, that took a lot of time off the clock, too. 45 seconds is all 30 yards on four plays and that Hoynes four-yard run. But two turnovers in the ball game, and it has cost them. We talked about it earlier. A very opportunistic ball team are the Idaho Vandals. You give them a chance like that, they're going to take it. First down and 10, but Eastern starts in a hole at the seven.
Johnson. Runs into Rodas. Wilkins. And Dowdy. Well, the Eagles are playing conservative. They're so far down in their own territory. They've started this on a seven-yard line. They want to keep it on the ground, hopefully get some more yardage to maybe play with, but not this time, as about the whole right side of the defensive line for the Vandals converging to make the stop. You saw number 99, Cord Smith, get great penetration. Kevin Johnson and Charlie Oliver turn to play inside. Picture-perfect defense. Second down and 10 at the seven. trying to keep him from doing that. Yeah, he calls time out. There's no way anybody's going to hear him. 9-0-1 to go in the third quarter. The Vandals to the Dome rocking. In Minnesota, they've got the Metrodome. At Idaho, they've got the Kibbe Dome, and that's exactly what we're hearing right now. Snyder came up to the line as if to say, I cannot hear. He's not the only one. Boy, this place is just going crazy. In our crowd, I would say, well, let's fill up a little bit more. Uh, probably right up around uh, 10,000 here tonight. Yeah, pretty decent crowd looking over at the students. Quite a few students on, on this side where we are, or the parent side and everything. There's a lot of them. Pretty good crowd, and uh, they're witnessing a good football game. The officials, I'm not sure if they're telling the Vandals don't encourage noise. That could be the case. Yeah, look, the Vandals are trying to quiet everyone down. But I don't think this crowd is going to stand for that. Second down and 10 at the 7. Snyder cannot get the ball snapped. The Blue Birds come out on that one as Snyder, you cannot hear. The Idaho Battle defensive team is trying to quiet down the crowd. But the crowd is very much into this ball game as you see some of the partisan Idaho Battle crowd. Don't make noise, I think, was that signal. <laughs> see, the yeah, camera. they're waving at somebody, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> at the cameras, Keith Gilbertson hoping that everybody needs a little bit more quiet. Second down and 10 still from the seven. And Eastern will finally get one launched here. Complete brings up a third down and 10, another passing down, but uh, Eastern is not being able to do anything here in the second second half. Jeff, the Idaho defense is playing pretty tough. First possession, the Eastern fumbled it away. This possession, they got driven down deep in their own territory. It's third down, 10 to go on about the eight yard line. 8.56, third quarter, 21-14. Idaho and Eastern, the Vandals right now with a seven point lead, but we've seen quite a battle so far tonight, third down and 10, the Kippy Dome again coming alive. Long count. Ball caught by Jefferson, but the Vandals are there. The Kendrick Jackson, I think, was the man the initial made the stop. He stopped the runner from getting any farther. The battle stop him should probably get some pretty decent field position. Although we are going to be faced with the number one punter in the nation. Now watch it again. I think it was number 21, Kedrick Jackson. Yes, it was. Getting up there, making the first stop. With John plays number 18 and 51 on top of it. Jerry Medved. Here's Stein, who's kicked a couple beauties tonight. Oh, he gets another nice one. High lofting boot taken at the 45 by Lee Allen. Oh, penalty flag down. Lee thought he might have had a chance at it, but I think we're going to see this one called back. Looked like he might have just uh, about had a shoestring tackle right there. He might have been off to the races, but it's probably going to be a clip. 43-yard punt again by Stein. He came in averaging that. He's and hit that a couple of times tonight. He likes that average. <laughs> Whoa, oh, face mask. Where well, that flag went down, you thought for sure it was going to be a offensive penalty, or at least a, a penalty on the return. Five-yard face mask against the defense on the run back. First down. Yeah, where that flag was thrown, Jeff, it was kind of behind the play and uh -huh. to the side, so it would be where it usually would indicate a clip, but hey, the battles will take this. Gives them five more yards. It was a five-yard run back. Give them another five more. That's ten yards. Raise the harness on the counter. 
Boy, he's really got fire in his eyes tonight out there. Five-yard pickup by Todd Hoynes on the counter. Watch how quickly he finds the hole and gets through it, Jeff. Right there, it opens up for just a moment. That's all it takes for Todd Hoynes. He takes it over left side, picks up six yards. 8-17, clock running. Third quarter, 21-14, Idaho. Second down and five. In case you missed it, Eric Jorgensen out with a concussion as Bruce Harris is ripped down in the backfield. Nowhere to go this time for Bruce Harris. Good defense coming in there was Doug McGill, I believe, was the first man for Eastern. Senior out of Seattle, 6'4", 218. Nice good play. From right there, number 59. Wanted to finish the story. Craig Robinson also out with knee ligament damage, and the early word, he may be gone for the year. So the number one and number two receivers for the Vandals out of the ball game right now. Chris Slater's done a good job replacing Craig Robinson in the game, though. He has. Third and nine. Braves fires. Intercepted. Pat Ogden was the man coming up with the interception for Eastern on this one. There's a flag on the play on the run back, I would imagine. Wait and see what's going to happen, but... Once again, the ball tipped, and the tip drill comes into effect. Number 19, the strong safety, Pat Ogden, was the guy coming up and getting the interception. You wonder, was there any interference? Oh, Zorn's oh. on the field, and a warning from the official. So while we uh, meddle our way through this Taking one, a timeout with 7.28 to go, 21 to 14. Dick Zorns is pleading right now with the officials. Yeah, he's still on the field. He wants to get in. You can see him right there. That's his head just at the bottom of the screen. That's the head coach for Eastern Dick Zorns. He's not very happy with that call. See a little powwow going on right now down in the far end of the field, but I honestly didn't see it to do. No. I was too busy watching the ball. It seemed like it was kind of a late flag, too. We'll watch it again. We're going to see if there is some contact with the intended man. Breeze goes back, has all the time in the world. It's really kind of hard to tell, isn't it? I didn't yeah, look that much. Could have been offensive pass interference, maybe if nothing else. Pat Ogden, anyway, the strong safety coming down to 